Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Melissa Duralia. And I'm Richard Andrew. And I'm Lauren Fisher. We would like to welcome you all to this evening's performance of Money Mad. A play by Kurt Scorin, set in the 1950s. This is the second year our main stage production has been held in this room, the very room we have our drama classes in, Monday through Friday. The cast, as well as Mrs. Hendrickson, our drama teacher and director, believes that this gives you, the audience, a closer interaction with our actors and actresses. To show your respect, please turn off anything that makes noises, such as cell phones, pagers, nagging wives, passing gas, and basically anything of that sort. <laughs> <laughs> we also ask that you refrain from leaving this room except at designated intermission. That is, unless you get a page from Cameron Diaz. Richard, we already told them to turn off their pagers. Oh, yeah. Well, I think we covered pretty much everything. Yep, I think that's it. Sit, Sit back, back and enjoy, enjoy the show. The show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ricky, you never heard the cheers we rehearsed under 
Sam? I never admit it to anyone. And if I were you guys, I'd forget about it as well. <laughs> you're just jealous, because you're not on the chair as well. But me? Jealous of your little lung-busting exhibition? Please, look how better uses for my respiratory system. Why not? I'll go pedal your tonsil somewhere else, you tonsil peddler. Ricky, you apologize to my cheering squad! Me apologize to your, your litter of larynx lifters? Just for that, I won't go out with you tonight. You mean to say you date that pygmy? He's not a pygmy. It's, it's just that his growth has been temporarily retarded. <laughs> his manners too, I'd say. Oh. There's no point in rehearsing our tears here. Let's go over to my place. Our room is just the place. Good idea. I'll just look at some privacy. I think it's a wonderful idea. Let's go. <laughs> You'll hear more about this from me later. Just as long as it isn't those cheers. <laughs> You're impossible. <laughs> How are we going to get there? My junk keeps out back. <laughs> Can an old seven without falling apart? Seven? I bet it's probably not like seven. Yeah. Let's all pile in. Shot Wait, in. Babs. Before you go, I was wondering if you wanted to hit the skating rink a couple times tonight. I'll think about it. I'll remind you. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh! She'll think about it, will she? What's the matter, Ricky? No. Hold on, the only thing just heard. That was Babs and Amanda Barbarian. She thinks she's a cheerleader. <laughs> but when I hear though, she's one of the best. <laughs> I'll get it! Hello? Call out yourself and see how you like it. Keith, you great big kid, put down that phone. You busy? Oh, not too. Company. Have you anyone in mind? Mrs. Hobson is a very bright and upstanding lad by the name of Keith who would like to take a bit of your afternoon. Hmm. Never heard of him. You're missing the thrill of your life. Do tell. He's the back of the football team. How dull. Six foot three inches tall. Not interested. With a size 14 shoe. You're pretty Owns a car of questionable vintage. Don't we all? You can claim one outstanding distinction, though. Go on. There's a true strawberry birthmark on his right shoulder. I love strawberries. And it just so happens he's acquired a choice for the literature from the Glenmar Colored College. Wonderful. The literature and the birthmark can come on over. That can be accomplished in one false swooping step. Oh, no, you don't, Sir Keith. Your mother, Mrs. Blakely, has given me strict orders not to let anyone through that window. And that's one rule you're not going to break while I'm here. OK, Horatio, thou shalt not cross. Happy, you have no right to talk to Keith that way. Them your mother's orders, Miss Janet. Well, still, the way you take over here sometimes, one would think you were one of the family. You know, I've been coming here so long, I almost feel I am. Well, don't take that too much for granted, Effie. I only said I almost feel. But you want to know something? I wish it was true. Because you all are so, so comfortable and nice to be with. We all like you too, Effie. You forget anything. I will. Now, I'll leave you two alone and clean this room later. Be sure to go out the way you came in and your mother wouldn't like it. My soul both. Cross your heart and hope to die? I'll cross my heart, but I'll never say die. Then you ain't under oath. Watch him, Jerry. He's a tricky one. She knows you better than I do. But if you play a card track, you get farther than she will. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? A man can go as far as his confidence will live. Well, then don't plan any long trips so far as I'm concerned. I wouldn't dream of it, my pet. He who travels alone travels fastest. Well, let's see how fast you can travel over here with that college pamphlet. Oh, interested, are we? Now, don't get irksome, little boy. I have my ways and means. Yep, you have your ways, and they're all mean. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. You go to your college, and I'll go to mine. But just remember, I chose that college first. Personally, I think you do much better than regular college for boys in a co-ed. Nope, don't agree with you at all. I'm quite confident I'm the co-ed type. On the other hand, though, you have quite the best lady in Master Life. Can you see his car on For your information, Keith Hobson, I'm no fugitive from a dizzy chain. I'm going to blend more, and that's that. Give it to me, big bully. Try and get it. I will. You gotta do better with that. Give it to me. Jen! What's going on here? Well, we're really choosing our co-ed, won't we? Keep. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Blakely. What I just witnessed was a sample of a co-ed. I'm not so sure that I approve. Um, I 
I'm sorry, Mr. Whitby. I started it. You did not. I did. Stop bragging. I brought over the pamphlet. And I was the one who tried to take it away from you. You were so stingy with it. I was going to show you two in good time. Yeah, in your own good time. And there's no time like the present. Snatcher! Did you see that? I did. She took advantage of me. But she won't be like it. <laughs> These teenagers. This parent is grossly overrated. Larry! Oh, Larry! Larry, are you home? Hi, Edgar. Oh, did you ever see such weather for September? It's as hot as the hinge of the Hades. Well, I was going to mow the lawn, but I think I'll let my boy Keith do it. He's got a little more energy than me, you know? So I saw the weather a minute ago. Come on over, you got the whole layout. I mean, you know straight where the throughway of Chicago's going? Can't even be true. Hey, listen, Edgar, I'm glad you waited until Maude was out of the house. I uh, don't want her to know what's going on here. I don't want Cora to know what's going on either. Here, take a look. Oh, yeah, this is right where it goes. Up around the ground here, makes a definite curve and goes straight down to the lake, but, but what's that straight down the line right there? That was the original layout of the throughway, but politics and nature's obstacles changed its course. Don't see why it would. It seems like the more straight the throughway, the more practical it is. There's two reasons why it isn't going to go that way, Larry. One reason, they have to blast through Stony Hill at prohibitive cost. And the other reason is Senator Greer. What's well, Senator Greer got to do with it? So it happens that he owns all of the Silver <coughs> Lakefront property, as well as most of the lake. He wants to build up an amusement park with lots of summer cottages, plus an impressive motel for the tourist trade. And you know what the weight of a senator can do to change the course of a highway. But how did you get wise to all this? I have connections. I know people in all the right places. How do you think I acquired that blueprint? I was wondering about that. Well, that's how. See these two five-acre parcels outlined in red? Sure, the through it practically goes straight through the middle of them. That's the two parcels you and I are going to buy. I don't know, Edgar. We'll be taking a big chance if we do. We're taking no chance at all, Larry. What Senator Greer wants, he always gets in this state. So we've got nothing to lose. Well, that's what you said when you bought these two houses so close together. This, this is where that factory side is supposed to go. Where's that? South end of town. And here we are, <laughs> holding the bag. Look at this. This, this place is horrible. We couldn't give it away in a bingo game. It's not even an alleyway. It's a hiatus. It's been friendly and handy anyway. Sometimes too handy. I wouldn't want it any other way with a neighbor like you, Larry. No, well, neither would I, Edgar. Said like a gentleman. Now to get back to business, I've had a long talk with Teddy Emerson. He's willing to sell these two five acre parcels. How much? Peanuts compared to what we make off of it. Besides the price the state will pay for land use for the throughway, we'll have one of the best locations in town for a gas station. And not only that, the entire length of the curve of the throughway goes straight to that property. Do you know what additional possibilities that offers? No. <coughs> Billboards, advertising inducements, the possibilities are endless. And all for, guess what? How much? $300 an acre. $300 an acre, 10 acres, that's uh, $3,000 for the whole one? That's right, $1,500 a piece. We'll double that and more by next June without having to sell or lease one tenth of that property. I don't know, it's, it's a lot of money to me right now. To be honest with you, I, I haven't got that much money. Neither do I. But I do have a way we can both get our hands on that amount and more, if we really want to go through with it. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, when my mother died, she left a $2,000 educational fund for Janet, which is held in trust by me. I have complete say as to how it may be handled or invested. I intend to put $1,500 of that money into a real estate investment. By the time Janet graduates next June, she'll have $5,000 or more to see her through college. Well, that's all very well for you, but what about me? Your wife told Cora some time ago that your father left $2,500 to his education, and that you will complete jurisdiction over it, the same as I do with Janet. But I'd never think of gambling with Keith's future on a 10 to 1 shot like this. Who says it's a 10 to 1 shot? Well, it's, it's gambling anyway. There's no such thing as gambling on certainty. I don't know about that issue. Well, I do. We've got to put this deal in by Wednesday, or forget about it. Then we better just forget about it. Forget about it? The chance of a lifetime when you say forget about it. Well, it's just that it wouldn't be my future alone I'd be gambling with. It'd be mostly Keith's. If anything were to happen to keep him from going to college, I'd never forgive myself. And neither would I. Jan's heart is just as set on a college education as Keith's. Only I have more foresight and confidence than you have. If I can put this deal through, Janet will be able to go to college in style. She'll be able to meet her obligations without stinting. And keep this going with the best of them. But I want all that for Keith. I want to send him to college in style. It's just that by taking the wrong chance or making the wrong investment, I could deprive him of the whole thing. I, I just don't know. 
Now look, Larry, you can't let me down at this stage of the game. I've gone through a lot of trouble to get the facts. And they are facts. If only I could be certain. Do you think I'd take the chance if I wasn't certain? After all, I am a real estate agent, and it's my job to know what's going on. That's what you said when we bought these two houses. <laughs> I've learned a lot in ten years. That was a hunch. This is a sure thing. Don't miss it. You'll regret it the rest of your life if you do. It's, it's just too risky. We've got to put this deal in by next week or forget about it. After that, we won't be able to touch it. Well, shoot. Can't really afford to touch it now, for that matter. All right. I'll tell you what. I'd better drive you up there right now and point out the proposed physical lines in a true way. All right. Then I can see exactly what we're talking about. But remember, I haven't said bye. Right. But what you, when you see what I'm talking about with your own eyes, you'll know for sure this is the opportunity that only Hobbs wants. Let's see about that, Edgar. We'll see. They know you want on that door. You're not getting out of that linen closet until I'm through with this pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing all that banging? I rather imagine it's me. And what's he banging for? Eh, one scout in the linen closet. Then why don't he? For the simple reason that I shoved him in there when he tried to take this pamphlet away from me. Does he have to stay in there? So long as the door is locked from the outside, it does. And who locked it? I did with my little fingers. Well, these little fingers is going to let him out. Effie, don't you dare. I can't have him banging down the door. Your mother wouldn't like it. Besides, he's too nice a boy to be locked in the closet, and you know it. I know not. Keep your shirt on. I'm coming. What's the big idea locking me in the linen closet? Oh, is that where you've been? Oh, it's been eaten, no. <laughs> How was it in there? Dark! What do you expect, Aurora Borealis? <laughs> Please don't shout. Can't you see I'm reading? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. In that case, why don't you stand on your head? <coughs> or turn the magazine right side up. I was only pretending anyway. Where's the pamphlet, Janet? I'm sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. You win. I'll share it with you. Oh, well, that's very sporting of you, considering I have full monopoly. I was only trying to get a rise out of you. You'd like to get one out of me right now, literally, so you can take it away from me. Oh, gee, can't we get it together? Well, all right, but none of your tricks. That's where. You're solid both? Okay, close your eyes. Okay, you can open it. You get a chance to look at it? No, I can let you out too soon. Let me show you the high spots. Okay. That's the new swimming pool. Look, tennis courts. The campus. Oh, the auditorium is huge. The gym, look at it, it's tops. Oh, it sure is. They hold dances there too. You mean we'll be dancing there together? Uh-huh. Oh, I can't wait till September. <laughs> How'd you do that? Do what? Sit up like that when I was already kissing you. Remember? You can kiss me, Keith. What's up the same now? Why isn't it? <laughs> I don't know, but it just isn't. You're my girl, I still have all the other advantages other guys do. Advantages? Yeah, old romance is the private's best moments. What do you mean? For one thing, our telephones are too close together. I can't call you like other guys do with their girls. Oh, see what you mean. It seems silly to call you, all I have to do is stick my head out the window! Well, <laughs> it'll be winter soon, and the window will be done and the drapes will be shut. That's what I mean. Romance by permission of the season. It's not fair. I want to tell you things now, not two or three months from now. Well, we can do it now, Keith, if we pretend. It won't be the same, Janet. <laughs> well, <good. laughs> Look, I'll go to the window, and I'll close the curtains, and I'll turn my back to it, and I'll wait for you to call. <laughs>
Are you really say, look, 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 I was. I finished it. This is the new cheer I've been working on. You know, I'm going to be really glad when football season's finally over. The only thing I can hear to these days is those cheers. It's not everyone that gets to be a cheerleader and make up their own cheers, too, you know. I don't know no wants to, either. Ricky, sometimes I swear you're jealous. What? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. A little. Don't you want me to be a cheerleader? No. You're being selfish and mean, Ricky. Oh, heck, you and I don't have any fun anymore. I don't have much time. Oh, you always have time to go roller skating with that dick. <coughs> Every day after school. You never go with me anymore. You haven't asked me in nearly a week. Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah? Yeah. When? Well, mm -hmm. it was... What was it? When's... Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can't even remember. Well, can you go with me tonight? And I got my new roller skates, been standing up for a long Just look at them! Wheels? No, spin the wheels. You think it's revolving in the air. <laughs> You'll get great speed out of those. Yeah, I know. You think we can go tonight after supper? Alright. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Ricky, have you got good lungs? Sure. How's your breath control? Fine, I guess. Have you got volume? What do you mean by volume? Can you yell? Yeah, I can out yell anybody on the block, including you. What? I need someone to replace Jimmy in my cheering squad. He had too many subjects and was forced to drop out. Do you really think I can do it? Sure, I'll try you out. All right. Tell me what to do. Scream. I want to hear how loud you can yell. Tell me when. Go! Ah! <laughs> Ricky, you all right? You guys sick? No, of course not. What is going on in here? Oh, I'm just trying out my voice. Trying it out? Trying it out. Out. Ricky, it was wonderful. You're in. Emma? In what? My cheering squad mother. Jimmy had to drop out. I might have known. We thought he was being murdered. What's wrong with Ricky? Oh, are you alright, darling? Yeah. Oh. I'm fine. Alright, can a guy not yell when he wants to? Not that loud, dude. You gave me a terrible start. I thought you were hurt. Nobody yells that loud when they're hurt. They can't. It's all my fault, Mrs. Thompson. I was trying out Ricky's voice for my cheering squad. Oh, is that all? We can't have any fun in here, Beth. Just go outside. I'll be with you in a minute. You go down to the vacant lot if you're going to practice cheers. The neighbors have some right to peace and quiet. We're not going to yell the cheers, Mother. We're going to say them. Come on, Ricky. I'm disappointed. Thought for sure there's makings of a good scrap in that screen. Nothing exciting ever happens around here. You're always looking for a good scrap, Miss Maggie Murphy. That reminds me, I got a bone to pick with you. Well, bring it up with lots of meat on it. There's nothing like a good argument to rejuvenate me. But this is one argument you ain't gonna win. <laughs> there ain't been a day when the work went down with the cow. I think they like to argue. It's nice to get along so well. Yes, it is fortunate for us that they, they do. Yeah, it's a lot better for getting back. I have dinner on the stove. Well, so is mine. But sit down a minute anyways. It seems as though I'm always picking up after baths. I know what you mean. My boys can get to learn what hooks and coat hangers are made for. You know, Maud, I'm glad that Janet and Keith have chosen the same college, aren't you? They won't get long school away from home. They'll be comfy for one another. Yes, I feel the exact same way. It's so comforting. I will miss them when they go. Yes, so will I, but it's still a long way off. Only a year, and you know how time flies. You think it's true? I must hear the paper wasn't printed. Uh, all this surprise me. I never knew you could be such a clam about something like this. What puzzles me is where they got the money for it. I mean, we're always broke, or so my father tells us. Probably borrowed it or something. Mm -hmm. What's this about borrowing? Mother! <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I didn't see ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know how it was done, Mother. We only know that they did it. At least that's what it says in tonight's chronicle. Did what? You might as well show it to him, Keith. I mean, you can't keep a thing like that a secret. Keith, what a secret, Keith? You know my Kate's suspense! Uh, Mother, there's nothing to get excited about. Just that Pop and Mr. Blakely invested in some real estate. Real estate?! What? Again? Where? When? Here, read tonight's chronicle. Do you know? I don't like the way this is shaping up. Neither do I. Something 
coffee like the morning this is in Seattle. I wonder where they did get the capital to invest. I'd like to know that too. I always thought we were moving from hand to mouth and two scoops ahead of the sheriff. The way we've stretched ends to meet, we're doing everything but setting a place at the table for the sheriff to come and get us. It's the Emerson property. And ten acres too. What good is it? Nothing but uncultivated farmland. And full of rocks. The price! <gasps> it has to be a misprint. It can't be. It's spelled out. But three thousand dollars? <laughs> Where did they get it? They haven't got three hundred dollars between them. <laughs> they borrowed it. They had to. How? A loan maybe? The bank? Mortgage! They mortgaged our homes! Our very roofs! How can you do that, Mom? Who says he couldn't? I do. Pop couldn't mortgage your house without your signature and being a party to it. How do you know he couldn't? I heard Mr. Blakely talking about things like this. See, since you and Pop bought the house with tenants in common, one can't start a consummated deal involving the property without the signature of the co-tenant, or something like that. You know, I think Keith is right. I have heard Edgar talk like that several times. And our deeds were drawn identically except for the description of the premises. Then where did they get the money? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Say, it just occurred to me, maybe Pa and Mr. Blakey are dummies in this sale. If they bought that property for $3,000, <laughs> they're dummies, all right. That's not what I mean, Mom. Well, I do. No, when you speak of a dummy in a real estate transaction, you mean someone who bought a piece of property under his or her own name for an unknown party. Then the dummy deeds over the property to a Mr. X, who initiated the deal in the first place. Now, do you understand? No. Well, I don't know how to explain it to you. <coughs> Edgar! Oh, Edgar! Edgar, are you home? Oh, hi. Oh, hi. How are you guys? Uh, have you seen Edgar? No, but we'd like to. Oh, well, it's not important anyway. Oh, no, it can't. And no, you signed paper, Larry. I saw it when you came in. Well, nothing too, uh, too big in tonight's issue, huh? There's one item that causes for a bit of explanation, I should think. Oh, yeah, there's no reason the uh, Transit Commission should be raising the buses. <laughs> I'm more concerned about how other things will raise. <laughs> hey! <laughs>
much we can do, is there? I need our college. Our heart is not going. Well, do you think there's any chance of the three-way going through the property they bought? I don't know, but from what I've been hearing and reading lately, it won't. I need our money. Why do they ask us first? I guess we're not important enough to be asked. Hey, whatever happens, we're going to go to college.
Oh, we'll hurry over. Mother and father are out marketing. Another 15 minutes at least. Oh, and I got an answer from the college today. Yeah, I'll show it to you when you get here. Okay, make it snappy. Look at these. Your sister's been leaving a trail of paper behind her for the past two days, making the strangest noise we would come ever heard. I was glad when the football season was over. All I got out of her were yell. I nearly split an eardrum. What is she up to now? Oh, she's competing for honors in the high school studying. <coughs> What's that? You know, you do specialties, something out of the ordinary. Well, she's doing it all right. And if she ain't careful, there's going to be a paper shortage in this town. <laughs> Look at my wastebasket. It's still to the rim. Remind me to empty this before I go. Listen to that beast, will ya? He's pushing that roller skate over the window <laughs> I'll put a stop to that. Now listen here, you whippersnapper. You cut that out. Your father won't tan your hide, and I will. I have half a mind not to go over there and shake the daylight out of him. Down with Maggie would let you in. She's going to reach the end of her rope, too. Now it's the lower pain. If you don't want to stop that, I'll come along. Of a part-time position, and that your application will be considered. 
Yeah, along with a hundred others probably. And then if I do get the job, will it pay me enough to put me through college? No, I guess not. I got the augment or something. Cash would be a very nice supplement. Say, you have five hundred dollars and I have a thousand. Let's put it together and split it down the middle. No, Keith, I couldn't do that. Why not? It's my money. Thanks, Keith, but we're gonna have to think of a different way. Scholarship can pay you right about now. That's it, Keith. Scholarships. Why didn't we think of that before? Yes. Why didn't we think of that before? Maybe two months before. That way we could have majored in something that is eligible. Well, maybe it's not too late. Face it, Janet. We're not geniuses, and it can't be done in two months. Well, you've always been an excellent scholar and an all-around athlete. Perhaps you could pull some strings. Oh, wishful thinking would get us nowhere. For one, because I'm not an excellent scholar, mediocre sums it up really nicely. <laughs> Two, because I'm an all-around athlete, I've been all around the field. <laughs> Besides, all scholarships have been tied up with nice and little packages and ready for distribution from months ago. Well, this is a good idea anyway. Better late than never, so they say. Oh, wait, oh my hand back. Um, excuse me, I forgot my handbag.
Larry's elocution. Next thing you know, he'll be trying to poison me. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a blankly house from my name. I'll get it. Okay, 
And we don't have to spare the horses either. We can be as loud as we want. Okay, bring the gang over when you're ready. How do I look, mother? Am I hidden really enough for you? You look like something the rag picker forgot to take with him. Great. That's exactly how I want to look. <laughs> you kids won't think it today. We want our act to look authentic, Dad. The rest of your act is as authentic as you. I'm sure they'll be hauled off to jail for something or other before they even get here. Most of the gang looks worse than I do. I've got to go finish my makeup. I'll see you guys later. You know, this whole stunt night act was all Babs' idea. I think it's very clever, and I hope she wins one of the prizes. When she tackles anything, she really goes all out. Takes after her father. I never do anything about Habs either. You certainly don't. You swallowed hook, line, and sinker all in one gulp. <laughs> <coughs> one of these fine days, you'll have a cause to eat those words. I've swallowed them before, and all I got was indigestion. <laughs> Wives, you're all the same. You never see further than your noses. We don't have to. Our sense of smell takes care of the rest. So why are the ears tonight, aren't you, Mrs. Blakely? Where did I put that cotton? I'm sure I had some with me. I saw a wad in the secretary yesterday. That's where I left it. Incidentally, that's no place for it. We have a medicine chest in the bathroom. Why do you want cotton? To stuff my ears? What do you think? Do you have an earache? Who hasn't since that didn't next door started? I'm getting prepared for Bob's stunt night after they arrive. Like everything else, you overdo it. Huh? <laughs> Skip it. Come in, Kate. Get him out of here! Dad, we need to talk to you. What? I said we need to talk to you on a matter of business. I can't hear you. Take the cotton out of your ears and you will. <laughs> What did you say? I said we need to talk to you on a matter of business. What's he doing with you? I asked him to come because it involves both of us. What possible business could he have with me? Indirectly, it means a lot to both of us, Mr. Blakely. Indirectly what? The property that my father bought. Our money paid for it, and we'd like you to deed it over to us. Deed it over to you? Don't you know that miners can't own property? Why well, can't they, Mr. Blakely? They're not of age. If that's the case, then what happens to the property left the miners after their parents died? <laughs> a legal guardian is appointed to them by the courts to look after their interests. So since our money paid for the property, who are legal guardians? Your parents. So say you want to sell the property? You can't without your parents agreeing and entering into the transaction as your legal guardian. Sounds awfully involved, Dad. It is. Until you both reach age of 21, you have to rely upon your parents to provide for you. Provide for us? That's what you and my father haven't done. Whoever you're in my father's mad money schemes, we'd be going to college this fall. Keith, that's unkind. I'm sorry, Mrs. Blakely. Young man, I've taken all the incidents out of you. I'm going to now. Get out. Mr. Blakely, I'm sorry. Get out. I'm going with you, Keith. You'll stay right here. You can't treat Keith this way. Janet, listen to your father. Good night, Keith. Good night, Mrs. Blakely. Good night, Janet. I'll see you tomorrow, Keith. We'll do no such thing. Why can't I see Keith? Because I forbid it. For what reasons? Reason? Do you know what's going on next door? That's not reason, that's insanity. And who's going to be the ones to suffer for it? Keith and I. We're not going to be able to go to college this fall. Who says you can't go to college? It takes money, Dad. Leave that to me. I'll swing a deal and I'll take care of everything. Yeah, that's funny, Dad. You and your deals. She doesn't believe me. Is that so hard to understand, Edgar? I'm her father. She should believe what I tell her. You haven't gotten around to accepting the new order of things. Times have changed drastically in the past decade between parent and child. I haven't changed. Why should she? Because your days of learning are over. Hers are not. Father Dash, I'm learning new things every day. Yes, but the same old school of thought. Today it's different. How different? Well, I can't exactly put it into specific words, but the pupil of today is taught to look for truth, taught to reason for himself, and taught to think think things out intelligently to his own understanding. He no longer takes anyone's word as the gospel truth. Fine state of affairs. What is our educational system coming to? <laughs> That'll be the stunt night crew. I'm going to my room. I'll get it. It's Gloria the gang. I'm staying right here. I'm not going to miss a trick except the noise. Mr. Hobbs is going to get a dose of his own medicine after the gang's as loud as a New Year's Eve celebration. Well, enjoy yourself, Edgar. I'm adjoining to more comfortable and quieter quarters. I'll get it! I'll see you later, Edgar. I think I'll stop by Janet's room for a quick chat. She's taking this all very seriously. And Edgar, no fisticuffs with Mr. Hobson. He would like nothing more than to get to a brawl with you. The place is ours! <laughs> no, it's
trash. Trash? What do you think little beast next door is doing? Don't let it get you down, Dad. Do what I do. Stay one step ahead, little stinker. Maybe we should just ignore him. Knives? How do you ignore a thing like that? He's getting out of hand. Well, don't get excited. You know that representatives of Mitchell Manners and Gladbar are coming to visit you this afternoon. Yeah, I mustn't forget that. They're the best attorneys in town, but I have the slightest idea what they want with me. They said that the representatives were going to call around 3 o'clock on a matter of urgent business. Representatives? That means two of them. I wonder why two. Edgar, you haven't done anything illegally. Of course not, Cora. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Well, I'm off, Mrs. Blakely. Three o'clock and dinner's already to go on the stove. Oh, Kathy, do you have to go? I meant to ask you to stay later, I forgot. You going someplace, Mrs. Blakely? No, but we're expecting two very important visitors this afternoon. Well, if they plan to stay for dinner, they better not. The roast ain't big enough. <laughs> they're not dinner guests, they're lawyers. And they're coming here especially to see me. You ain't got yourself into trouble, have you, Mr. Blakely? Certainly not. They're probably just coming to see me on a special matter of business. But you ain't sure. What else could it be? Where lawyers are concerned, you never know. I'll stay. I'm too curious to count. Stay, Seth, but you can start dinner whenever you're ready. I'll start it now. It's got a tough look to me. I hope those lawyers are here for business and not you, Mr. Wilson. We've got to do something about that. She's getting too efficient. She doesn't mean to be. It's just her way of showing how concerned she is for us. Well, I just assumed she wouldn't be. Yes, Jenna? Keith and I need to talk to you in a matter of business. Keith? Business? What business? You've got no business being here in the first place. I ordered you to stay out. Edgar, don't get excited. I'm not getting excited. I just don't want to hop to the Miss House. I'm afraid it's unavoidable at this time, Mr. Blakely. What's so unavoidable about it? Jan and I are representatives of Mitchell Mayors and Bluff. I believe a letter was sent to you in regard to our calling this afternoon. Is this a joke of some kind? <laughs> Hardly that. Here. This will bear proof that we are bona fide representatives. Good afternoon, Mrs. Blakely. Hello, Keith. What's this all about? That's what I want to know. This letter declares them as representatives of Mitchell Madison Club, all right. But it also says they're here to transact a very special matter of business. That's right, Mr. Blakely. It seems you're a bit too hasty in going to the deeds of the Emerson property that you and my father bought jointly with our money. There's nothing wrong with that deed. I've drawn up hundreds of my time, and I know what I'm doing. In this case, there seems to have been an error of omission. I never leave anything out. The eyes of which you have a lot things you have. A very serious one, too. My deeds are never an error. I have a copy of that deed right here in my desk. I'll prove it to you. Here it is. Now what's wrong? I do have a transcript of that deed with me. The error seems to lie in the wording of the guaranteed instrument. There's nothing wrong with the wording of the guarantee of this instrument. In the learned opinion of Mitchell Marys and Blau, the deed you and my father executed was illegal. And since my father was a part of this heir, you know it would be right that he'd be here to rectify it. That old goat? Who was an old goat? Now, Larry, no violence. What are you two doing here? I'm not here because I want to be. Nor am I. Then what's keeping you? You are. You and your stupidity. Don't you call me stupid. That's only one of the many things I can call you. Stop it, both of you. It's high time you both started acting like parents instead of irresponsible minors. It's important that you listen to what Keith has to say. Won't you sit down, Mrs. Hobson? Well, I don't know if I should. Please. All right, the sooner we complete this business, the better. Now, Mother, I want you to sit down, too. On the lounge, Mother. But Janet! Please, Mother. Very well. I think you can go ahead now. <laughs> Since you know all about this, Pop, I think you better sit down. Uh, where? Uh, anywhere. Not in my chair! I wouldn't contaminate myself. Sit over there, Pop. <laughs> Let's go on this business quickly before certain unwanted elements cause me to fumigate the place. That's an insult! I didn't mean it for a compliment. Sit down, Pop! <laughs> Mr. Blakely, may I request that you refrain from dealing in personalities at this time? Whoever said he had one. Dad! You son use knives and cut your own heart? Oh. Ma, remind me to give Ricky another dollar when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, two overgrown boys with chips on your shoulders. Before you start ripping each other to ribbons, let's complete this complete this important matter of business. Pop, you stay in your corner. And you stay in yours, Mr. Blakely, until this matter is completed. 
Well, let's get on with it, whatever it is. I'm dying to know what's wrong. So am I. Simple. If you will kindly look at your copy of the deed, you will note that Emerson property is deed to you, my father, jointly as individuals. What's wrong with that? Is illegal to use monies belonging to other people for your own personal use. I had every right to use that money as I saw fit, and so did your father. We're your legal guardians. Granted, do those guarantees include Janet and me? No, you're not of age. That is not the point. Then what is the point? The fact still remains that the deed you and my father executed was illegal. If you failed to identify yourselves as guardians in the trust for us, which remains in Glock this is a very serious error of remission. Here's a correct deed. Here's a correct deed. Correct in the error. You will be signing the rights and turning the lawyers the next Wednesday. I still insist the original deed was drawn up in good faith, even with the error of omission. Ha! You admit it! Of course I admit it! You don't! You mine in jail! You made my cousin accessory after the fact! I did not! He went into this transaction with his eyes wide open. It was merely a technical error on my part in drawing up the deed. But why didn't you come to me instead of going and seeing the lawyers? Well, we did come to you, but you wouldn't listen to us. I think well, this will do to my reputation in town. How could you do this to your father, Janet? Well, we want to go to college. What has this got to do with college? Everything, Mr. Blakely. As soon as you and my father sign that deed, the friendly little national bank will loan us the money we need to go to college this fall. On that worthless piece of property? It's no longer worthless. Janet and I discovered quite by surprise that the Natural Gas Corporation was interested in leasing the property to sink experimental wells. There's certain natural gases present. And should their expectations bring results, the company will pay us generous royalties for every well that produces natural gas. Where was I all this time? <laughs> Probably trying to make some fast sure deal somewhere else. But Keith, you never told us about the royalties before. No, Mother, I wanted you all to hear at the same time. And when you and my father sign that deed, you'll be making a profitable investment in your education. Jan and I thank you very much. I always knew some good would come out of it all along. No good ever came out of these two houses we bought together. You can't be right all the time, and what am I talking to you for anyway? Nobody's asking you to. Oh, Janet, I'm so happy for you, and you too, Keith. I wanted so much for you two to go to college together, and now you can. I can't believe it. Neither could we until the president of the National Bank assured us. And we're counting on you two to take good care of our royalties when they start to come in for us. Don't worry, son. I've learned my lesson. From now on, I'll take care of everything that comes your way. Janet knows I always have her best interest at heart. You always mean well, Dad. Hey, don't forget we have to follow a report with Mitchell Manners and Watt. Yes, that's right. Can I safely report that deed we signed and notarized to the Lord next Wednesday? I'll have it by next Monday if I can get the cooperation of your stubborn father. Who says I don't cooperate? And another thing. Why don't you people sit down and iron out your differences like civilized human beings? Well, I mean, what better place than here now? You better get going. Mother, it would be wonderful to come home and see the curtains at the window open again and know that everything's just as friendly as it used to be. <laughs> All right, break it up. I heard the whole thing from the stairs. It's not nice to eavesdrop. Yeah, but you learn a heck of a lot. I think Keith's right. You need to bury the hatchet, and I don't mean in each other's backs. Perhaps I think it'd be best if you went to your own. On the contrary, Dad, I think I mean it here. These situations can get out of hand if they're not handled with finesse. Now let's make this simple and straight to the point. Babs, I'll thank you to mind your own business. This is my business, Dad. If this situation isn't handled correctly, it can have a disastrous effect on my personality later on in life. <laughs> to say nothing of Ricky's. What's Ricky's life got to do with this? Mr. Hobson, do you want Ricky to be a little stinker his entire life? Who says he is? I do, because you made him one. He used to be a nice guy until you taught him all these mean tricks. He doesn't stop now, he's going to develop a split personality, and you're going to have delinquent on your hands. You're going to let her talk to me like this? The truth, isn't that? Well, maybe it is. I don't see what you have to be mad about anymore. You've made a good investment in spite of yourselves, and Janet and Keith are going to college. Dad, you're right-handed, aren't you? Always something. And Mr. Hobson, you as well? Naturally. Prove it. Shake hands and be friends. Dad, shake hands with Mr. Hobson. Show him you're the bigger man. Hey, no man's bigger than I am. Maybe half one. Uh, that's a bargain. Painless, wasn't it? I guess I did pull some rather raw tricks on you there, dear. I pulled a few in here myself, like. Mother, what about you and Mrs. Hobson? Well, I've never really been mad at Ma. Only disappointed. 
tell you the truth, I haven't had it since this whole thing started. Neither have I. It never seemed right or not talking. It's silly, isn't it? It certainly is. I hope it never happens again. It's so good to talk to you. I feel the same way. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss is fun, boy, Larry. Smart, too. You have every right to be proud. Well, Janet's no slouch either. That girl's got a head on her shoulders. I'll get it. If you guys were expecting company, Bob and I can go. I don't think we are, are we, Cora? No, it's probably just a peddler, and Babs is wonderful at handling them. Dad, there's a man here to see you on business. My name is Grant Thomas P. How do you do? This is my name, Mr. Larry Hobson. You don't say, that's just fine for me. How do you do? See, I was going to call on you next, Mr. Hobson. You were? Uh-huh. <coughs> oh, and this is my wife, and Mrs. Hobson, and that's my daughter, Babs. You're probably wondering why I'm here. You see, I represent the State Hiring Commission. I'm sure you've heard of the Thruage of Chicago? Yeah, we have that one with that one. Doing too much, though. Well, it seems due to circumstances unpredictable, but the Thruage had to undergo a few changes, especially in this locality. Now, my mission here today is not a pleasant one. No one is allowed me to support spring news, and it's not exactly glad tidings of great joy. Well, uh, won't you be seated, Mr. Grant? No, thank you. But we'll put my brief face on this table, if I may. Certainly. Don't set a mic on, ladies. In fact, I think it'd be better if you sat down. I suppose so. As I mentioned before, my mission here today is not a pleasant one. Nobody likes to be responsible for the eviction of others. Edgar, what have you done now? <laughs> Mary, you're keeping something from me to Karen. No, ladies, it isn't anything your husbands have done except provide you with a home, which you will have to vacate within the next two months. Why? I don't understand. I understand how you feel. It's not easy being told you have to leave a house which you have lived in and loved for so many years. Now, the state tries to do its best by its victims, but should opposition confront us, well, no alternative than to condemn and confiscate. What's wrong with our property? <laughs> nothing, gentlemen. Absolutely nothing. Except the state wants to buy them. Buy them? Of course. To get to the point, the throughway to, through to Chicago is going straight through your houses. Our houses? Yes, yours and Mr. Hobson's. In fact, you are the only two in this locality which we are forced to take. Why, that's wonderful. We were going to sell anyways. You were, I right? How were we? So, do I understand correctly, Mr. Grant, that the state wants to buy these two valuable pieces of property? <laughs> that's right, Mr. Blakely. Can I assume then that you're authorized to purchase at a price? Yes, Mr. Blakely. Our price. Wait a minute. Your price? To be more accurate, the state's price. And we don't have any say in the matter. I'm afraid you don't, Mr. Blakely. These properties and their houses have been appraised by the experts. The state has reached what it considers up. Fair figure! <laughs> Edgar, don't argue with Mr. Grant. Ask him for, first what the state is prepared to give you. We never pay enough. Just ask. Come on, Edgar, what do we got to lose? Our homes? The very roots of our heads? Oh, come now, Mr. Blakely! The state is never that harsh! Very well. What are you prepared to offer? A price that will please you. This part of time is considered business property now. I am offering to both you and Mr. Hobson. $20,000 a piece of oh, your property! Stop! Did I hear correctly? If you didn't, don't pinch me because I don't want to wake up. $20,000? That's wonderful! I can't believe it! Well, you will when the checks are, are written and the, check, and the papers arrive in the mail. I gather for your action, gentlemen. The price meets with your approval. In every way. I should say so. In that case, I must be able to transact business elsewhere. If you wish any more information, it's fit by business address on the card. Thank you. Wow. Oh, great. You must be saying my goodbyes now. It's a pleasure doing business with you, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to meet the ladies, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Grant. Thank you, Mr. Grant. More company. This must be your busy day, Mr. Blakely. Oh, darn it. How can you sit there in that lounge? $20,000! I'm too happily shocked to move. Here, give me a lift. Thanks. I'm so happy I have to hug someone. <laughs> One good act through the mother. <laughs> sure, it's nice to see you to our friends again. It certainly is. We were silly to act the way we did. Childish, I thought. Immature, whatever possessed us. Well, you do crazy things when you're mad at someone. And all for nothing. You're so right. Hey, what do you think of Edgar now? He was right all along about these two houses. Well, I always did have an implicit faith in Edgar. <laughs> Corny. Good. What's the matter? You don't want me to come in. Good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Tony Solero. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony. I can't see you today. I'm trying to get in touch with you on Monday. Why well, you don't want to see me now? I bring you the cash. Dinner days, she's up. Uh, come and see you, I do. We do the business.
this all over the time. I bring in the money, I get the house, and yours too. I'm sorry, Tony, it feels more like valid. What's the use about it? The option to buy my house expired again today. Oh no, this is not so. It says here in the paper, I got it till 6 o'clock. Now she says, 3 o'clock halfway down. I got the same thing over you. I get in the house now? No. No. Larry Hobson, were you gonna sell your house to this this fish peddler? What's the matter? I don't get. What were you just gonna give yours away to him? Here we go again. Mom, <laughs> were you gonna sell to this dreadful fish peddler <coughs> like you and Edgar trying to beat us to it? Look, I got the money, I got the paper, I got a little time to stay. Find a couple of neighbors you are. I'd rather have a snake in my backyard. Oh really? Who are you to talk? We do the business now. Oh, I see the law. Go peddle your fish. You back out now? No. Oh yes. You don't sell it to I got the law on my side. I'm making you sell it. I get it. I get it. You see? You know she and Tony Smanero. He's the modern man. Go to there. <laughs> Normal, all fouled up. Leave it to you to bumble up the situation. Come on, Ma, let's get out of here. Stands, Edgar Blakely. You'll rue this day. Ricky, shoot the word. What? Ricky, shoot the word. Okay. <laughs>
much fun to work with, and we love this space because you guys are so close to us, and I want to thank you for supporting Photo Drama, so come back next year, okay? Mm -hmm.